I want to say I'm so done. I want to say I'm so done, but I know I won't be able to keep that promise. But I have never considered quitting the NHL as much as I have been this season. It's not because the team's not doing well. Oh, the Penguins are doing well. They're winning. The Leafs are doing surprisingly well. No, it's just I cannot, I cannot stand any more of this bullshit. I, I, I can't stand it. The, the league always insists on locking out its players. Doesn't let them go to the Olympics. Cares about referees more than players. And there's still this idea of the so-called code in hockey where you have to call up a guy when you have when your team is based on speed and skill. You need to call up a guy to enforce and act as a policeman because you know one of your players is going to get attacked from a dumb hit he made the last time the team's played. I just wish that that the league had listened to Lemieux when he came out and said everything he said years ago. But he got silenced. And yes, you could say he was a hypocrite for having Matt Cook on his team. But Lemieux was just the owner. He doesn't get he doesn't pick the players. He doesn't pick who has a letter. It's not his fault that he had Matt Cook on the team. The owners try not to meddle with the team day to day business, and I respect that. And when he tried to say something, he was shot down. When Shanahan tried to fix the league and make the suspensions tougher, if you can see as you can see in the emails, shot down. It's just, uh, I, I, I don't, I don't know how long much longer I can take this. I, I really can't. Uh, well, in case you're living under a rock, or I don't know, uh, and you missed last night's game, uh, while well, the Penguins won seven four. Um, that was all very good and fun. Uh, it was good effort. Uh, Malkin was full in Gino Machino mode. Connor Sheary looked great. Jake Gensel looked great. Matt Murray settled in after a shaky start. But that's not what I want to talk about. Yep, they won the game, and I don't even want to talk about it. What I want to talk about is all the nonsense that surrounded the game, starting with the team calling up Tom Sestito, because every time they play the Winnipeg Jets, they have to have a tough guy in the lineup because Winnipeg is a very physical team, a dirty team, takes a lot of penalties, and no, you can't beat them on the scoreboard. No, 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 you have to have a tough guy, a so-called tough guy in the lineup, a goon who you know is not going to get you any minutes and it's just going to be there to fight. You want to see Goons play? Go see Goon 2. comes out next week, next Friday. It's going to be hilarious, okay? Don't have them in the NHL. So that, that was how it started. So they call it Tom Sestito. Um, fine. You know, Patrick Hornfrist suddenly laid scratch out the concussion. Of course, what else is new? Um, and, you know, there's big talk. Oh, is Malkin going to have to answer to his actions? He's going to have to answer the bell because of his hit on like Wheeler last time the team was met. And, yeah, it was a bad hit. He should have got suspended. It was a very bad hit. But why does someone need to answer with a fight for a bad hit? You know the way you answer? The, you know the way you really get punished? The league comes, drops the hammer, and suspends them. But no, there's no suspension for Malkin. And I'm saying this as a Penguins fan. There's absolutely zero consistency when it comes to discipline. discipline zero consistency with anything. And he should have got suspended. And that way, that would have really been how you get back in Malkin. You give the Penguins, you don't have the Penguins with their best player right now for the however many games he would have had. Let's say five. I would have given at least five. And then we'll see where they're at. You don't need to answer the bell and getting back at him by getting to a fight. Stupidest thing I've ever heard. People say there's no such a thing as a code. Yeah, that's the code right there. That is the code right there. Working its magic, saying, you go after me, I'm going to go after you. You have to answer for your actions. And it's stupid. It achieves nothing. It's pointless. But let's say you want to do that. Why do you have Tom Sestito in the lineup if you know that you're going to expect Malkin to have that fight? First of all, why are you even letting Malkin have that fight? If the whole reason why you called up Tom Sestito was to prevent that from happening. Why are you letting Malkin fight when it's one of your best players when it should be Tom Sestito, if that's your logic? So Malkin, Malkin fights. Lucky doesn't get injured. He loses. Fine. Whatever. He goes on and he has a great game. Tom Sestito, I'm pretty sure it's on the ice when that happens, but no, Malkin fights instead. Tom Sestito comes on, fights Chris Thorburn, for God knows what reason, because he felt like it. Um, gets into a fight, gets like a 30-second champion back on the ice, and then the next time he's on the ice, he does 
just an atrocious, an atrocious hit. If you haven't seen it, please look it up. It's it's on uh, Tobias Enstrom, one of the Winnipeg Jets' best defensemen, lands him in the hospital with facial fractures. This is a guy who was called up to do one thing and one thing only. He did his fight that you wanted him to do. Why is he back on the ice, Mike Sullivan? Why? Why was he called up in the first place? But why is he even back on the ice if after he's done what he's supposedly there to do, why don't you have him back out there? Makes no sense. You put him out there, he makes a dummy hit, and totally right on the numbers, right from behind, dirty hit from behind into the boards, completely blindside. And yeah, you could say maybe Enstrom should have seen him coming. I'm pretty sure Enstrom looked. He had his head on a swivel. He saw him coming. But what is he supposed to do? Of course, he's in a vulnerable position. He's trying to get the puck off the boards and move it up ice. The last thing you expect when you're trying to move the puck up ice is a guy coming in and hitting, from you, hitting you from behind. That's the whole point of row 48, isn't it? Blind hit to the head. Yet, yeah, he tries to defend his actions. It's just... And I'm glad he's getting a hearing, but if he wasn't, wouldn't have been called up, you wouldn't have been in that situation in the first place. Because now, you put your team down a player, and you're sure, you're, you're forced to have, your forward lines are jumbled up the whole game. You're forced to play one player short the whole game. Luckily, the Penguins had a lot of power plays, um, but that meant it, uh, um, so you wouldn't have been playing anyways, and they, they shortened the bench. But they also had a lot of penalty kills. So they were really, guys... You know, 10 guys were getting a lot of ice time that could have been prevented if you would have had a better player or if you would not have been such a dumb dumb and hit him from behind on the numbers, completely dirty hat that we're trying to get out of the game. Like, where's your brain, dude? Oh, maybe your brain is all scrambled because you've been in one too many fights. That's probably what happened. Probably why you went all haywire. And now people say, Garrett Batman namely says, oh, well, we have no, uh, there's no evidence to say that CT is directly related to concussions. Dude, are you high? Are, are you actually high? Look at all the stats. Look at all the research that Boston University has done. Five out of the five NHL players that they've interviewed, that they've checked the brains of, have been found with CTE. Four of them were enforcers. So you're telling me that there's no direct link between CTE and fighting? You're, you're, it's a complete joke. You're, I'm, you're high, dude, really. That's probably why Tom Zestito is doing all these dummy moves. Because his brain is all jammed for being hit in the head one too many times from fights. Yeah, it causes brain trauma. It causes you to do stupid things. Like, it, it's not, it's not rocket science. You're seeing in the OHL, they've implemented the new rule where 10 fights a league, 10 fights, and you are um, suspended for a game. Every extra fight is one more game. The AHL did that last season, went one step further, and is now three fights. And we are seeing fighting diminish drastically three fights a season in a season, and you're out. And what does the NHL do? Five minute penalty. Slap on the wrist. Hit from behind? Nah, three games. First time offender? Nah, two games. Slew foot? Nah, you know, depends on the player. Like, it's it's just, it's mind boggling how the NHL is run. It's, it's a complete joke. I, I could do a better job, honestly. Like, and you look at the NBA, for example incredibly run organization i don't know much about basketball but i have friends that do and they tell me it's it's incredibly run there's no fighting and it's a great sport it has a large fan base there's a reason why hockey is the fourth most popular sport in north america by far out of the big four it's just it's brutally run and it's it's totally backward it's archaic like, their methods for discipline are archaic. They're the only major pro sports league that allows fighting. Okay, aside from boxing and in, in, in UFC. But they're the only major pro sports league that allows fighting. And Gary Bettman would say, oh, we don't allow it. It's a five-minute penalty. I mean, congrats, five-minute penalty. Have a timeout for five minutes. Like, that, 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 that doesn't achieve anything, buddy. The only way... 
to actually gain popularity is to maybe not be such of a joke and such of a farce and to not have people like dummies like Tom Sestito being called up to do one thing only and when he does his job sit his ass on the bench so we don't have players like Tobias Enstrom who is a great defenseman being in sent to the hospital for facial fractures there's a reason why the other leagues have so many fans and are so well run because they don't allow circuses like this to go on if you want to see a circus, go to Cirque du Soleil because, you know, we don't need the circus in the NHL. It's it's just, it's a complete joke. And, um, yeah, it, I mean, there's the NHL tries to, way too hard to make themselves popular and all they do is fail and really make themselves more unpopular. You're not going to change the American fan base by having bozos like that fight. And you say, oh, well, it's part of the game. It's been here for ages. No, it, it's a fabricated, socially constructed North American idea of the game. If you look at European hockey, if you look at international hockey, international hockey, there is no fighting. Olympics, there's no fighting. And it's the best hockey you'll ever see. It is the best of the best. It's all about playing and it's about the game. Same with NHL playoffs. It is the best hockey you'll ever watch. And there's no fighting because there's too many, too much on the line. The Europeans generally also play much more finesse and it's that is the way hockey is supposed to be. At its hockey at its finest is a speed game. It's a skill game. It's a game of finesse. And it's North Americans that have injected the sense of brutality and and fisticuffs into it. And I'm sick of it. I'm just I'm really sick of it. I, I honestly I don't know what it's gonna take for the NHL to do something about hits about hits from behind. Because Yes, they're going to give him Tom Sestito suspension, but as long as um, their suspensions are lackadaisical, these hits are going to keep coming, and we're going to keep seeing great players have a concussion. Do we want to have another Crosby situation where we were robbed a year and a half of his prime due to concussions? This is what it's going to come down to. Is it going to come down to someone dying on the ice if the NHL does something about fighting? Yesterday was the... Um, what was it, 13th anniversary of the Todd Bertuzzi Steve Moore incident? Um, again, looked it up if you don't know. He was allowed to play again in the league. He was allowed to play the next season. He should have been criminally charged and sent to jail for his actions. But because it happened in the context of a sports game, it's okay. If that happened on a bar fight, he'd be in jail for years. But because it happened in the NHL, no. It's just part of the game. It's okay. It's all right. Well, yeah. We'll let it go. We'll suspend you for the rest of the season. You can come back after the lockout. No problem. It's just, I honestly, people say that the league is fine and it's better than it's ever been. In terms of speed and skill, yes. Fighting has organically found its way out, but it's not good enough. You still have those incidences like last night. The league is not as good as it's ever been. Until the league properly handles hits to the head and fighting, it's it's going to be fourth by a long shot. And we're going to have the same thing every year. We're going to see players missing long stretches due to injuries, due to concussions. Until the mentality and culture of hockey changes, until the league actually wakes up and does something about it, the league is not in good shape. <sighs> well, I'm sorry for that rant. Um, good win, though, last night. Uh, next game on the road trip tomorrow night against Edmonton. Crosby versus McDavid. Should be interesting. Now we have a three-way tie for uh, second place with points. Crosby, Mock, and Kane. Whole 70. So we'll see what happens tomorrow night. Uh, of course, McDavid is 74. Anyways, um, that's all I have for this game. Please like if you like. Subscribe if you really like it. Uh, let me know what your thoughts on fighting, what your thoughts on headshots are. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss, man. I don't know how many more times I can, I can keep preaching this. And what would it take you to turn away from hockey and stop being a fan? Because I've tried and I, I don't know. I, I can't do it. All right. That's all for now, guys. Thanks a lot.